It's another edition of the UTRGV Men's Basketball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg. This is the head coach of the UTRGV Men's Basketball Team, Dan Hipsher. Coach, you started this season in Florida with a trip to Miami. Went to the NIT Championship last year, North Florida, an NCAA tournament team a year ago. And, you know, both tough games for the squad. But what did you see at your team? Well, you know, what you see when you play competition that strong and that early is kind of like Izzo and those guys were talking about before the big series is last night. You know, he, he goes, sometimes you almost want to lose a game against, you know, and, and, and have your team understand where they need to get to. But uh, I scheduled, the you know, the guarantee game at Miami and then wanted to start a, a series out there. And I tried about six schools and ended up with North Florida. We scheduled it before their season last year, and you know they've been a, a decent program. And uh, but boy, they developed last year. They got a bunch of veterans. They made the NCAA tournament, and now they're playing with an unbelievable amount of confidence. So, got us a series start. But two great teams to play against. And to be quite honest, we weren't ready for the challenge quite yet. But give them credit too. Okay, <laughs> these are two very good teams. Miami's preseason top twenty-five. And right now, if you did an RPI status thing, uh, I would say North Florida is probably sitting on top five in the country with a win, win at Illinois and another win at home. You know, uh, you go out with two games and you win games like that, uh, they're, they're pretty good. So uh, two significant opponents that I think we found some things out against, but we can't dwell too much on it. Uh, they're very good. They're ready. We're not. But uh, I think we can get there. And uh, so some good signs and, and uh, some struggles. I saw one of the good signs, uh, Dan Kamasa, coming off a strong freshman season, uh, had a couple of huge games. He had 64% of his shots. Dan really played well. Uh, we have preached and preached to Dan that we have to play through him this year uh, to relieve some of the pressure on, on some of our other people. And... Uh, he finally is starting to grasp onto that a little bit, and uh, uh, he still has to get better at it. But uh, to be honest, he's not only a good scorer, he's a pretty good passer. And uh, he might, we not, might not have got a lot out of it this weekend on a, let's see, Kamasa. Yeah, I think he's got four assists and yeah. two turnovers on the season for a post guy, unbelievable. And if we can continue to get that out of him too, playing through him, uh, it's a big part for us. Dan is a good free throw shooter. He's got a 15 foot range. He can score on the block. He can do a lot of different things. And and uh, regardless of how a team works, Jonah, it, it's hard to say everybody's equal on a team. Mm -hmm. you, you want, you know, when you when you play the Rockets, you know you got to stop Harden and and so be, you know you've got to have some significant people. And therefore, your other players can kind of live off of them a little bit, and hopefully we can get to that point with Dan. Would you say his success on the inside uh, helped to open up other things like the three-point shooting, which is 42% for the weekend? We're a good shooting team, you know. Uh, we probably aren't getting quite enough threes off in some ways because we're not making the extra pass off the drive. One of our difficulties this weekend was the size and strength of these opponents and, and uh we were getting into the lane, but J.J. had trouble. He tried to make interior passes. And to be honest, many times when you get in the lane in traffic, the pass is the one out. And we missed a few of those, missed some extra passes, saw it on film. I thought we had better ball movement today in practice after the kids saw it. But uh, you don't get to get a lot better between Miami and North Florida because you got to get ready for North Florida and you don't get the video uh, breakdown until you get back to be able to show the kids to improve themselves. But uh, overall, you know, a, uh, I'm proud of these kids. They, they work hard. They're tough. We had some really significant defensive stretches against Miami that were very good. We did not against uh, North Florida. They got us stretched out, and they they had a kid the first half that that made like f ten threes the whole season he made four in the first half against us as a as a five man you know post wow. player and one of them i knew we were in trouble when we trapped him in the corner one time the shot clock's running out and he turned around in the dead corner and slung it at the rim and it banked the side of the backboard and, and netted through and like you know those the little yeah. skimmers so it, it wasn't going to be <laughs> but but 
and again, I'm, I'm probably over talking here, but in the second half, I'm never one to like, hey, let's win the second half, you know, but let's play well the second half. You know what I mean? And against North Florida, I thought we looked more like a team and doing the things we're trying to do the second half, which then brought about success. Okay. We played through Dan. Dan was dominant inside. And then we worked off of that. And it, even if it had not gone in, if we gotten, instead of winning 50 to 45, just say we'd have won, you know, they beat us 45 to 35 again in the second half, it still would have been the right thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I was proud of the kids for doing that. So that's definitely something positive that you can build on. I mean, you talked about the good practice today, and then of course moving forward uh, into your next few games. You know, I guess that's one of the good things about playing tough teams like this early. Like you said, you know, you learn a lot about yourself, and it's a great experience. Well, no doubt about it. You know, you could open up at home and play a couple, you know, bad teams, and you really don't know what you're going to do in the face of adversity. Then, and our kids have been confronted. There will be no tougher games anywhere on the schedule than those two games were. They just happened to be the first two games. So probably a way to use, even though you lose, it, to get a building block and, and get better off of that. Another guy had a strong weekend, uh, Shaq Hines. You've been talking about his improvement in practice. I know the exhibition game didn't go the way you would have liked, but I mean, he, he scored some points, he got some rebounds, and uh, he really showed off his three-point shooting ability, too. Well, he did. And, uh, you know, Shaq always gets us some boards. Uh, I'd like him still to get a little more physical, a little tougher, a little, little stronger of a finisher. Uh, I don't want him to become a strictly, you know, finesse guy. He's got the body for it to finish at the rim and do some things. But he had a good weekend. Uh, I think he was one field goal under 50%, so he's shooting 46, but he was four for five at the, at the uh, three line. Uh, when he steps into one and knocks it in, he's got a great chance of going in now, which is great to see. The concern is, Jonah, he shot one free throw the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. And you know his athleticism, I know it, and he can get more out of that than that. But uh, the biggest thing with Shaq is, and the film he watched today, was his defensive uh, effort. He, He's given us some effort, but not, not the intelligent effort that, that I think he can give. He should be a defensive stopper. He's quick. He's athletic. And again, that's all that mental toughness grinding in. But uh, overall, he, he's, he's Shaq with the three-point shot now added to it. And uh, uh, we look for good things for him. You think that could help to create some matchup problems as, you know, you have four suddenly have to guard him out at the perimeter? Yeah, you get him out at the perimeter. Sometimes you get three guards in with him. And, uh, uh, you know, you throw him. Slaughter has actually been one of the best three-point shooters all fall and struggled this weekend. But, uh, you know, hopefully you get more spacing out of having those two guys out there. In fact, Green shooting the ball well, too. So, you know, it. Uh, I fell for my two fifth-year seniors struggled some this weekend. You know, Dakota has not been in the role he's in. You know, he played sub-minutes at, at, at Alabama. Now yeah. he's primary minutes. So, you know, he's a little more pressure, a little more involved, and he knows that. He, no one's more disappointed than, than he is on the way he played. But it, it's all getting into that flow and feeling it. And the same with J.J. J.J. was hurt a lot last year. Uh, he's played really well all fall, but he – I tell you, he had a great bounce back second half against North Florida. Because I, I kind of jumped him at halftime about, hey, man, let, let's show up, okay? Because he was playing against one of the best guards in the country. The, the Moore kid was special, yeah. going to be a pro. And uh, uh, all of, I thought J.J. really had a nice second half and competed and did the things he needs to do, and I thought it built his, built his confidence a lot too. Uh, I got after him a little bit, but his uh, – Mother and father were back behind the bench. I think they got after him more than I did. <laughs> Good to have them around once in a while. Yeah, you mentioned you know, seeing some of the newcomers, the fifth-year seniors, and then uh, some of the freshmen, too. Antonio Green earning a start. Really uh, played well. First night out, he played exceptionally well. You know, you look at his stats for the uh, weekend. I always forget he's a guard, but he's down at the bottom because he's number 55. And, you know, uh, two games, eight for 13 from the field, four for eight from the three, one for two at the free throw line, two assists, two turnovers. So, you know, 
pretty good for a, a freshman. And he, he's a great shooter. He shoots well in our drill work and uh, plays with a kind of confidence and athleticism. Again, he's a freshman. He's going to have his ups, ups and downs at times, but I'm really excited about him. I think he's really playing well. Well, now you come back home uh, for the next three and five out of the next seven. That's a pretty nice home stretch. Yes, it is, and, and uh, uh, be good for us because there's plenty of road games coming <laughs> after that. But, you know, now we got to get, get back and play. You know, you got Kingsville coming on Friday night. They gave us problems in here last year. They were a scrappy bunch. They've got, I think, five of their top seven back, and they just play free-spirited. You know, they come in here with nothing to lose, and, and we've got to be ready to crack down and do our job. Then you just you keep playing. It's every other day, uh, almost until Thanksgiving. Uh, so very tight turnarounds in between every game. Exactly. Portland State rolls in right after that on uh, what is it, Sunday, Sunday or Monday? Yeah. Sunday. S Sunday, and then uh, come back uh, later in the week with was it Tennessee Martin? Uh, Southeast Missouri State. Southeast this week. Missouri. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So JJ's so, old team. Exactly. Little scouting report. <laughs> so they get rolling fast. Yeah, he'll give us a personnel report for sure. But <laughs> Portland State is uh, on a trip there kind of like we did with North Florida, where you make a trip to a guarantee game, I think they're gonna play Texas Tech on Friday mm -hmm. night, and then roll in here, and then uh, play us on Sunday. So, uh, you know, it's uh, we start a series with them, but uh, looking forward to getting at home, and hopefully people getting out and supporting this. It was a great environment in here last year against Kansas City, and you get people back. It's tough this time of year, you know, college football, pro football, everything's going on, but, uh, you got to get home games when you can, and, and uh, we've got some this week, and hopefully people will get out to support us. Well, Friday is going to be a very exciting day. CBS4 doing their uh, newscast live from the field house. So, folks, if you want that college game day type atmosphere, you're going to have the opportunity. There's going to be a pregame rally starting at 6 right in the field house uh, area in the, you know, the gazebo right before where you enter and you can be on television and have your signs up there and <laughs> come up with something uh, creative using the letters CBS and I'm sure they'll show you on there. So that should be a lot of fun and we hope to see everybody out there pack the field house. Uh, it's Friday at 7 against Kingsville and Sunday afternoon against Portland State and then Tuesday night against Southeast Missouri State. And not only do you get the chance to be on TV before the game with CBS 4 but during the game as well. If you have a good sign, we'll find you in the stands. Uh, Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, Channel 323 throughout the state of Texas. All three games, you'll be able to watch them on television. So that's going to be a lot of fun. If you're in the Valley, we'll see you here. If you're anywhere else, then we'll see you on television. But now for Coach Dan Hipsher, I'm Jonah Goldberg saying we'll see you Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday, and then next week right here on The Coach's Show.